British Citizenship Application FAQs on Documents Required and Document Submission. That is our topic for today. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. I hope you are all well and healthy. If you are new here, my name is Charlene and here I share with you and show you anything relating to our life here in the UK. Welcome here. This video is a continuation of my mini series called British Citizenship FAQ series. Last time I answered some of the general questions about British citizenship application and I hope that you can check out that video here. Today, to continue with that series, I will be answering the most frequently asked questions about documents required for submission and the document submission process. Before I begin, I just wanted to say thank you to all our subscribers. Thank you for watching our videos. Thank you for all your support. It means a lot to us. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I just wanted to invite you to please don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. There will be more fun and informative videos coming your way through our channel. And I hope that you can join us in this vlogging journey. Thank you very much. Just a quick disclaimer. I just wanted to say that I am not an immigration solicitor or advisor. I am just summarizing here all the information that I am aware of based on my experience, based on research, and based on reading about this topic. And if ever you feel that you are confused or you need professional advice, please refer to an immigration solicitor or advisor to help you out on your particular situation. Thanks. Right, on to our main topic, which is the documents required and the document submission process for your British citizenship application. These questions were from the comment section of my vlog relating to this topic. What I did, I gathered them all up and put together similar questions and then I tried to answer them all here. And now let's start with the first question. First question is, what are the documents required to submit during my British citizenship application? Towards the end of your online application, there will be a list of documents that the UKVI would like you to submit. Use this as a checklist to ensure that you will have all the information that they would need to see in processing your application. In my case, this is the list of all the documents that I needed to submit. You will notice that for each item on the list, they will require you to provide a proof or an evidence. This list is tailored to your application, so carefully read the list that they will provide towards the end of your application. Here, I will show you my list. So they would want to see my passport that was issued by my origin country, which is the Philippines. And then they will also want to see my degree certificate as a proof of my knowledge of English language. They also want to see the proof of freedom from immigration time restrictions. They wanted to see my current PRP card and also my proof of living in the UK for X number of years. For my case, it's three years because I applied as a spouse of a British citizen. And it also asked for my marriage certificate, my two de referee declaration forms, and a proof that my husband is a British citizen, which it could be um, a passport. So those are the documents that they required of me to submit to them. Depending on how I wanted it, I could provide more to make probably to make my evidence stronger or I could just stick to what they've given me. And so let's let's proceed to the next question. Next question is do I need to submit financial evidences such as bank statements, pay slip, etc similar to those that I've submitted during my ILR or indefinite leave to remain visa application? The answer is no, you don't need to provide proof of finances, fortunately, during your British citizenship application. It is a big relief because I know how stressful it was to gather all this information during our indefinite leave to remain visa application. So thankfully for British citizenship application, we don't need to do this. And also, as you see in my list of documents, you will notice that it didn't ask for any proof of finances. Next question, very common question, do I need to submit my P60? Because it was not asked 
um, on the list of documents that I need to submit. I did not provide a P60 as a proof of my um, residence here in the UK. I only used my passport as a proof of living here in the UK in the past three years because that was the length of time that was required for my case. So to answer the question, I did not submit my P60. However, if you think that this will help on your case, you may submit your P60 to show that you've been living here in the UK in the length of time that they required you to be here. Next question, what do I do if I do not have the passport that I used in entering the UK? In my case, I have kept all my passports from my very first one to my latest Philippine passport. The Philippine government let us keep our expired passport, although I know there are countries that do not give back their expired passports when they renewed it. So there will be cases when you won't be able to submit the passport that you use in entering the UK. For this situation, they have provided um, a guidance on what to do, which I will show you now. You will notice on the list of documents that there is a note here. It says, if you do not have your passport or it was not stamped when you entered the UK, you need to include letters, for example, from your employer or government department as a proof that you've been living here in the UK in that specified time period that was required from you. So once you've got this cover letter or letter from your employer or from the government saying that you've been living here in the UK in that specified period of time, you can upload it into the UK VCAS website, which we'll discuss in a minute. So you may acquire this letter which will support your claim that you are, have been living here in the UK for that specific time. Next question, a very common question. Did you scan all the pages of your passport in your spouse's passport? Yes, I scanned all the pages of my passport, including those pages without stamps. I also scanned all the pages of my husband's passport. This is only to show to the Home Office that I am not hiding or keeping any pages of my passport. And also this was specified on the document checklist that I will be showing to you now. You will notice here under your marriage or civil partnership certificate, it says here you can send a photocopy of your spouse or partner's passport. You must photocopy every page of the passport. So from my perspective, looks like they wanted to see every page of the passport of um, my husband. So I also did the same for my passport. Next question, can I apply for British citizenship if my current passport has expired? When I applied for my British citizenship, my current passport that time had only three months left in its validity. So I know that during my application period, my passport would expire. So what I did back then was that I included another form of my identity, which is my driving license. So yes, you can still apply for your British citizenship with your expired passport, but you might want to provide an additional ID, which is still valid and also non-expired to confirm your identity. And for my case, I've provided my valid driving license. And now we will be moving on to some questions about the document submission process. First one is how do I submit my documents? If you did your British citizenship application online, you must submit your documents to a third party website, which is called the UK VCAS or the UK Visa and Citizenship Services website. You have to register first to this website before you could use it in uploading your scanned copy of your documents and in booking your biometric appointment, which will then bring us to the next question. Next question is how do I register to UK VCAS website? Here I will be showing you how to register to UK VCAS. So going back to the online application here on step number six, further actions. Once you get to this tab, there will be a button here that is called book your appointment. I wasn't able to capture the screenshot for this part, but if you click that button, this will bring you to the UK VCAS website. But the first thing that you will see there is a button that says get your access code. Once you click that button, they will send an access code to the email that you've used 
during your online application. So you have to wait for that access code. I think it might take a few seconds before you would receive the email containing the access code. And once you've got the access code, you may go back to the UK Vika's website and enter that access code that you've got and also the email that you use during your online application. They will ask you to create a password and confirm the, the password. So now you've got your login details, which include your email address and your created password. And those are the things that you will use to enter or to log in to the UK Vika's website. And here I will show you how to log in to the UK Vikas website. So basically just go to the ukvikas.co.uk and click the login button. And then it will ask you for your email address that you've used during your application and your created password. It will not ask for your access code every time. You will only need the access code once when you are setting up your account. Next question is when should I submit my documents? You can self-submit your documents online 48 hours before your biometric appointment. However, if you are using one of the UK VCAS services such as the document scanning, you don't have to submit your documents online before your biometric appointment. In fact, you need to bring all your original documents during your biometric appointment so that the staff can scan and submit these documents for you, which will then bring us to our next question. Next question is, should I scan my documents or can someone from UK VCAS scan and submit my documents for me? If you can, you may scan and upload your documents to the UK VCAS website by doing it yourself. But just make sure that you follow all the rules on the scanning of your documents, which can be found here. Another option is that you may buy one of the services of the UK VCAS, which I have just mentioned, which is called the document scanning. In the document scanning service, during your biometric appointment, they will scan and submit all your documents for you, and then they will return all your original documents to you afterwards. I think the additional cost for this service is actually £51. So it's up to you if you would like to do it yourself, or you would like to buy this service so that somebody can do it for you at a certain fee. There you go. Those are the most common asked questions relating to documents required and document submission process during your British citizenship application. I hope that somehow this has been helpful to you if you are currently in this stage of your application. If you have any other questions that you would like to be answered relating to British citizenship, please don't hesitate to comment down below so that we can include it on our next round of British citizenship FAQ. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to click the thumbs up button down below and please don't forget to click the subscribe button if you would like to be notified when our next videos are uploaded. Thanks again. Stay safe. See you on our next vlog and have a nice day. Bye.